<laughs> you and your Lana recording. Camera recording. Audio is audio. Uh, I'm rolling. Alright, you're rolling. It's my mama, mama, mama. Okay, we're all good? Can't make up words while you're I'd have to pull like a new face as well. Discussing the novel *The Shining Girls* by Laura Bukers, and I'm going to just jump straight into general impressions of the book. Eric, you never start. Go ahead. No. Um, I really wanted to like this book. I really wanted to like it. It is a brilliantly written, but terribly done book. It is trying to do too many things at once. Not what I expected. I actually really enjoyed this book a lot. Like uh, It did bounce all over the place though, so you will have to be prepared for that if you're picking this book up. Like It went all over the place. Um, but in my head, at least, it went in order of the killings, not in order of the time that the killings happened. If that makes any sense whatsoever, you'll have to read the book to, to understand. So, in my head at least, it made a little bit of sense. And yeah, I thought it was really well written. I liked the characters a lot, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed this read. Why didn't you like it? I wanted a good book about serial killers and or time travel. The serial killer was quite possibly the least interesting part of the entire book. And the time travel was boring. Every time something interesting was starting to be written, that character died. None of the living characters were at all interesting. Really? Oh, boo-hoo, I'm an old journalist who's no longer relevant, and I have a crush on a girl. Oh, come on. I would have much rather followed the um, uh, transgendered uh, circus girl. That was a brilliant piece, and it just died. Well, so did she. Yes, of course. But every single one of the Shining Girls, except for the one that lived, was pretty interesting. I thought, uh, I thought she Harper. was very interesting. I found her whiny and complaining, and oh my god, you survive a horrific, brutal murder. And murder. you know what? Her PTSD was great. It was everything else beyond that that was whiny and complaining. Her mother and everything about her friends and I what get friends. I get not liking the fact that people sort of had this weird fetish about her. That made sense. I understood her getting over everything, but I didn't like her personality in general. Really? I, I, I found her grating. Oh, I liked her personality. Um, maybe it's because we share a lot of similarities. I loved her snark. I loved her sarcasm. It felt fake. Really? It didn't feel funny snark. It felt like I'm snarking in order to be snarky. Like the oh, author's so that's trying not, to that's not That's not the way I took it at all. It was I'm snarking in order to create a distance between myself and this this character and this other character is the way that I took it. Which, just, you know, I understand because I tend to do the same thing. I just... I, the book was too all over the place. There was literary World War Two fiction to... A bad serial killer story to an extremely bad bootstrap paradox. It was everywhere. It made sense and it followed. But I didn't like Harper. I didn't find him compelling at all. I didn't find his lust at all horrifying or yeah, that's true. understandable. Well, he, he was bland. It was a... Serial killer of the week type serial killer on Castle or NCIS. Yeah. Okay, that I agree with. And he was the main character. No, he wasn't. He was the main point of view. He he was the. Um, he was the antagonist. He wasn't the. He, he should he, he, he should have either character. been more interesting or not in it at all. He would have been better antagonist if he wasn't in it at all. <laughs> if he was only there, in stories, like if. She was interviewing the daughter of someone who was killed, like the bla uh, the uh, woman working in World War Two on the ships. Yeah, if she could have interviewed the kids and they talked about this weird guy, that might have been interesting. But every time there was any kind of journalism work, it was glossed over really quickly. I think that was my issue. Is I wanted one kind of story, 
and I got eight. Really? Because for me, the, the style didn't change all that much. The settings did, but the style didn't. The style didn't, but the story did. You got invested in one story, the person died, you didn't yeah, get invested... I think... Did you, did you not know that these yeah, people I knew they were going to die? But they were more interesting than he was, and there was uh, so much of him. Like, even if it was just the story of her and the journalist dude, and then you switch back to the killing girls, that would have been great. But, I, okay, it's the serial killer. I really hated him. You really hated and, the serial and killer. And not because I wanted to hate him as a character, just because he was so freaking boring. <laughs> okay, I, is... I agree. I agree there. As far as serial killers go, Harper Curtis was pretty bland. and It's sort of a milder version of stuff that we see all the time. Mild. He yeah. could have fit on Sesame Street. That's how boring he was. He was so clean okay, that you that's could've... hyperbolic. <laughs> no, I'm serious. If you cut, cut away right at the death part and you pan up from him continuously touching him, his penis in public, there is nothing interesting. There's nothing gory. There's nothing psychological. Like, the whole storyline with him and the nurse was utterly useless. Yeah, that was pretty pointless. They, She should have been cut out completely, and then he should have tried that with one of the Shining Girls. It would have been sort of a loop, and it would have shown a little bit of character growth, and then the fall back. The fall back, yeah. Yeah, I think they should try to do it with the... Uh, and then the gave up? Transsexual, yeah, the so yeah, and then sort of gave up right away. And then away. gave up on that one, and then decided to fit in the nurse for whatever so, reason. Like a, I what know it's a name? time travel. I know it's a time travel, and I know that it's not supposed to be fully linear. Mm -hmm. Although this was very linear for yeah. his his timeline. For his timeline, yes. But there could have been less things and more of some things. Like I would have liked to have seen more of the development of the women. Maybe that's my own, uh, what would you call that? Sadism? No. Masochism? <laughs> I wouldn't have mind a, a, two chapters per Shining Girl instead, and one less each time of Harper. Of Harper? Where you get to know them, and you actually care about them. Because, like, I mean, I would start the chapter, and then I would flick, okay, six pages. Really? Because some of the stories were so interesting, and had so many yeah. possibilities. But they weren't the story. There wasn't a the story yes, other than was. Harper touches himself and dies. No. <laughs> Seriously, it was the lamest time travel paradox ever. Yeah, Ooh. I don't... Spoiler, I... he becomes the house. I was kind of hoping for something grander. Like, that he actually was warping the house that was some someone else's, that he was doing something other than just his spirit invaded the house? Eh. I don't know. It's like at, at the ending wasn't middle grade starting out novel type <laughs> sci-fi. It's not. <laughs> the ending wasn't that important to me though. What I really liked about it. The only reason I kept re reading was to see what happened. Really? I would have given up halfway. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. I didn't I like disagree. any of the protagonists. Oh, I really liked Kirby. I thought she was a, an awesome spunky young girl who had a n unsurprising number of issues, whose mother was a bit of a flake. Um, I liked Dan as a person, but honestly... He was every single yeah, protagonist was, written by a male author he was between very the 1920s cliche. and 1970s. Yeah, he was very cliche. He is the writer who is tired of life. <laughs> oh. But then again, it wasn't his story, so that didn't bother me that much. Then either. he shouldn't have it at point of view. Why not? Because I would like to go more in-depth into Kirby's actual psychology, her mind, as opposed to just seeing her from his point of view, which was a terrible love story. I know it was supposed to be a bad love story. I it know was it was supposed to be like, awkward. But late forties, early fifties, she's I would a twenty something year old. Much ago. rather I'd seen it from her point of view. Like the betrayal that she could have felt of having a father figure who only thinks of her for sex. Like there was no there was surface with her. Mm. Yeah, you had that's to true. extrapolate everything. That's I wanted true. to delve Kirby into her was psychosis. Quite surface level. I wanted this was a literary book. I knew it was literary 
as... But it wasn't enough. There wasn't enough psychology. There wasn't enough depth into the characters. Too much in too little time. Hmm. Okay. In my opinion. That being said, the writer's style is really easy to read. Yes, it was easy. Uh, it was. I really liked her writing style very much. And other than this serial killer, I really liked the time periods changing. Yes. Like, I could have read an entire book on each of the Shining Girls stories. And it feels like that's what she really wanted to write and not this sci-fi. I don't know. It feels like she really wanted to write about specific characters and wondered how she could combine them. And then really? threw a serial killer in the mix for fun. Oh, I didn't get that at all. I got... I, this was... Pretty... I might be bitter. You might slightly bitter. Just <laughs> slightly. slightly. See, I don't think that this book would have benefited in any way from any more of the Shining Girls that ended up dead. Mostly Not because... more of them, but more of them. Yes, no, that's what I mean. Um, because... Their purpose was not really to flesh out the book. Their purpose was, well, they're one of the Shining Girls and they're going to die. So you know that, you know, this is a big deal and he is a threat. He might be the blandest threat that you've ever read, but Harper Curtis is a threat. But if you had seen them chronologically without his point of view at all, it would have amped up the fear of him and how creepy he could be. Because when you know, he interacted I, with them, that was creepy. When I he was on his own masturbating to the objects that were there and always there nah, okay. I mean it's not that I it was that. I agree it didn't I shock think... me it just didn't do anything that's because you're adult now and jaded <laughs> no I have read serial killer books written for young adults that had better depth than this hmm. I don't want to kill you by Dan Wells Thanks. sorry uh, that being said, some of the lines of dialogue in this, not dialogue, um, of prose were really pretty. Yeah. Like um, when he put the wings back on the way, the painted lead wings. Oh, yeah, yeah. The radium wings. Radium wings. He put them back where they had always been. And I'm like, oh, that is really pretty. Yeah. But I, I still feel there wasn't enough done with him or with the time travel. Yeah, but see, the, the I know time travel it was, didn't need to be a focus. It was just a vehicle. I know, I know. But I still would have preferred a better explanation. Really? I wouldn't have. It was totally incidental to the story. It but, wasn't really... I mean, it was incidental. Yeah. And this made it feel important. Turning it into a bootstrap paradox as opposed to him just... Sorry, bootstrap paradox is... He his traveling through time causes the house to travel through time. Right. So it, if who created the house? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. okay. That, the idea of a bootstrap paradox. So the way that it's best described was in Doctor Who, where you love you have a time travel machine, you love Beethoven, so you decide to go back in time to meet Beethoven. When you get there, no one's heard of this Beethoven fellow, not his family, no one. So you have no idea what's going on. There is no Beethoven. So you, who brought all your sheet music to get it signed by Beethoven, retranscribe them. Oh, okay. So now the question is, who wrote that music? Who created the house? Right. Right, yeah. So it's a paradox yeah, okay. of time travel, which is really common. Sure. In anything that doesn't have alternate realities. But for me, in this book, wasn't important. What but, was important was Kirby's journey. But was it important to have that last part with Bartok getting the key? I know, I thought it was a nice little... Why couldn't it have been, like, the same amount of time with Bartok? Because he's a corpse in the middle why not... of the no, It doesn't but I mean, matter. But why have him get the key and not have him get the key from some mad inventor who dies on the doorstep type thing? You know what I mean? Why does it have no. to be a supernatural evil? Why That's what not? Because he's boring! <laughs> if he can become a time-traveling house, my god, what happened to Jeffrey Dahmer or an actual serial killer who had some kind of interest behind him? But that's not sci-fi. Well, this isn't sci-fi either. Well, it sort of is. This is fantasy. Well, I, I guess. This is fantasy. Vaguely. There's no... There's no real time. There's no science behind it. Yeah, no. Okay. 
it could be described as new wave fantasy, sort of like uh, Zelazny or yes, okay, uh, that kind of thing, yeah. where there's mixture of both. Yeah. But I was still a little disappointed because the house was such an integral part. the The house was a more but it, but interesting it wasn't character. There. It was just than him. a vehicle. But it talked to him. It told him what to do. Whether that was him well, that, being insane or not, apparently it, it was just him talking to himself. Yeah, exactly. It didn't tell him what to do. He it just did. Knew, no, he, he told himself exactly. What to he do. told him what to do. Oh, what I'm saying is the house seemed more interesting than him. I, I honestly think you could have left everything to the imagination about him and the house, just known that he was a time traveling person with a time traveling house. Yeah, but how would you have set that up without showing the actual house? You don't have to show it from the girls' perspectives. Show it from the victim's perspectives every single time. Then, I don't know, um, have some journalism where she puts it together? She did put it together. Yeah. Yeah. Quickly and then followed him. The only reason she found him or really figured it out and wasn't convinced by everyone else, oh no, it was just a traveling salesman who sold ponies from five years in the future, was because he showed up at her work. No, she was. she already believed at that point. Yeah. But I would have liked to have seen a part where she had written everything down, she had done a timeline, you know, crazy person thing with strings, and been able to convince Dan that she wasn't just some poor, broken victim that he needed to fuck. <laughs> Pardon my language. I don't think it was that bad between Dan and Kirby, honestly. I found it more angsty than most teen CW dramas. I, again, I found it about the same, but I appreciated that in Dan's inner monologue, he's like, Jesus, Dan, what are you, 15? Yeah. Yeah. Sh I shining actually, a, a lampshade on it doesn't make it any less annoying. It did, well, I didn't find it annoying uh, at Honestly, all. cut out all the male characters, point of views, and show it only from the females, and I would have enjoyed this book. Really? He would have been scarier. He Dan would have been, have been more less, interesting. If, if he would have, Harper Curtis would have been scarier if there was less of him. That is true. Um, Dan would have been more interesting if she was trying to understand him. The problem with her is it felt like she would suddenly have this bout of genius that came out of nowhere, like, oh, time travel! Okay, the pony one was obvious, but other stuff, like, oh, yeah! But we never spent enough time with her or in her head to truly appreciate how intelligent she was and how broken she was. Yeah, but, I, don't, I don't know that she was that broken, though. The whole thing with Kirby is was, uh, and what struck me about her character is that she's actually really incredibly strong, and despite having had this horrific thing happen to her, trying really hard to have a normal life. What? No, she's not. Yes, yeah, she is. She has put everything into a borderline suicidal direct line to one object. Find her killer. Right? Which is She's her, given her up vehicle, school, given up which is her vehicle to finding a normal life. This is How her is closure. That? Finding closure, yes. Finding a normal life, no. Yes. She's not trying to find a normal life. Yes. She's trying to find closure. Which leads then on to what? Being able to move on and have a normal or life. Or getting your throat slit. Or, or again. But still, if you need that closure, you need... I understood. Kirby. I understood her drive for closure. But it felt reckless and... I would have liked to have seen it she's from young. her mind, not just from a third-person narrative like, of I her don't mind. Know. I would have liked to have seen her thought process, seen her pain. This book was so devoid of emotion. <laughs> okay, yeah, there was that, other than the whole angsty thing. I don't consider angst an emotion. I consider it an annoyance. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's don't apologize. You're allowed an opinion. This is like, oh, it's an unpopular opinion because this is an extremely celebrated book with. Ah, uh, it's not that unpopular. It's, it's been split huh? when I was really? uh, yeah doing research on this. Um, there was uh, a bunch of critical acclaim, and then there was also a bunch of no, nah, just no with this book. No, it's a mess. It's all over the place. She can't decide what she wants. That kind of stuff, which is yeah. what you're saying. So we're we're essentially the critical split. Although I wouldn't say this is a work for critical acclaim. It was just, it was a really good, enjoyable book. I really liked Kirby. Could have done with a little less Harper Curtis. Agreed. Um, but he yeah. He could have been a terrifying villain. 
but like most terrifying villains, unless you don't see them, they don't stay terrifying. Yeah, that's With true. With some exceptions. Although I, I kind of like his blandness because it makes him feel like it could be rel- really anyone. Really? No, it just felt. I mean, I I don't I didn't. You can't tell a psychopath by looking at them. True. But you could tell that he was crazy by looking at him. Yeah. He They described him as, like, dead inside... I don't know. They described him as rakish, was, so slender, yeah. and with a limp. That's all they and described kind of him handsome, as. And handsome. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah. But, yeah, with a lot of charisma. Right. But I didn't ever... That word that means that I feel what he feels. I never empathize empathized with him. I should bloody well hope not. <laughs> but the thing is, the best serial killer stories that I've read, you do empathize with them. And that makes it scarier. Real I don't know. I think it's the people I can't relate to that are scarier. It's the people who pull the wings off of bumblebees for fun that I can't relate to. You didn't even and seem that's... to enjoy it that much. It just seemed like the thing he should do. No, it's just it's a thing he did without thinking about it. Yeah, and, right? that's, that, and that's that exactly... combined with more interesting traits might have made him scary. I don't know. I kind of like the blandness. I kind of mm. like the idea that he could be just somebody you pass on the street and don't think about because he doesn't stand out as evil necessarily. But you could do that and still have him be interesting when you're in his head. The battle between what society wants and what he wants was never explored. The... The because like confusion as to damn what society wanted. It's all about what he wants, and that's. But what did he want? That wasn't explored either. Yes, did he want love? Did he want to just jack off over bodies? Did he want blood all over the place? My guess is the second of those options, based on how it was described. I don't know. I they could. I feel like the character could have been better explored. He could have been better explored. Or there could less. have also been less of him. You could have done both. Mutually. One way or the other. That, that I think that is why I and a lot of other people apparently don't like this book. It feels like it sort of goes halfway to a whole bunch of stuff and never goes the complete distance for okay. any of them. Okay. That, that, so it, my take on that is it's because all of that other stuff, not necessary. Not part of the story. The story's Kirby's. And that's why. Then... I would have liked to have seen more of her intelligence, her pain. Even her dis- I would have liked to have seen more of her pain. Okay there, Harper Curtis. Her <laughs> disemboweling read more like a medical text than something horrifying. Mm. Okay, I'll disagree with that just because of knife fighting training that I've done. And yeah, the the way it was described, I had a visceral reaction to it because okay. you know, we trained for that. <laughs> Mm, ah, no, no. <laughs> I, I think it was just the complete lack of emotional words. Maybe, yeah, there was. It was. It, it was very really... emotional if you could project your own onto it. Yeah. But not being a girl, not having a dog, not being uh. disemboweled, and not having knife fighting training. <laughs> sort of like okay, so this kind of sounds like a description that Bones would give on the TV show. Oh yeah, yeah. Not the actual Maybe. book. Yeah. <laughs> Those are. Those will make your stomach turn. Oh, okay. I'll take your word for it. So, although we've heard a lot, uh, final thoughts and star rating. Um, I really wanted to like this book. I really did. <laughs> and maybe that affects my, what I felt about it. Maybe it's one of those things where I went in with too high expectations. Mm. Um... My gut instinct, yeah, I give it a, a 2.5. Not terrible, not great. I probably won't reread it, but I won't throw it out of my library because it sucks. Yeah. That kind of thing. Okay. I really liked this book. It was kind of all over the place, and um, uh, a lot of it was relatively surface level. Um, so if you're looking for like real scary depth stuff, you won't find it in this book. But still, I really enjoyed the read. Um, I had stopped reading to go watch a movie uh, <laughs> just as uh, spoiler alert Dan gets stabbed in the stomach and thrown out the door into 1929 and the whole time I was in that movie I was thinking god what happens I really need to get back to this book uh, I hope that was a really good movie because if it wasn't no it was a good movie oh, it was good. the jungle book <laughs> good movie um, but yeah so I enjoyed this book I would give it a 4 out of 5 so yeah 
I guess if you agree with Eric, maybe not buy the book. If you agree with me, definitely buy it. Okay. You yeah, get, to get it from the library. Get it from the book. library, yeah. Always get your books from the library. Or buy them directly buy them. from the author. Or that. <laughs> Steve? Sten. 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 Okay. By Chris Bunch and Alan Cole. So Nighty. that will be the next read, Sten by Chris Bunch and Alan Cole. If you have read The Shining Girls uh, and you have some words to say to either Eric or myself, leave them in the <laughs> comments down below. <laughs> we also have a Goodreads.com um, uh, book club. I'll leave a link to that as well. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye! Don't confuse the issue with rocks. You're right? <laughs>